Hello students, welcome to your social studies session. Students in today's session, we will do civics. Chapter number two, diversity and discrimination. Let us look at the aim and objectives which we have to cover in this topic, in this chapter. Difference and prejudice, second stereotypes, third inequality and discrimination, fourth people being discriminated against, five Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and striving for equality, the Indian constitution. First, let us understand what do we mean by the word differences and prejudice. Students, we do many things that make us what we are. For example, how we live, which language we speak, what type of food we eat, what type of clothes we wear, the games we play and the ce celebrations. All these factors are influenced by both geography and the history of the place in which people live. There are eight major religions in the world and every single religion is practiced in India. There are more than 1600 languages that people speak in our India and more than 100 dance forms. Yet this diversity is not always celebrated. We always feel secure and safe with people who look, talk, dress and think like us. Sometimes whenever we meet people who are very different from us, we may find them strange or unfamiliar. At times, we may not understand or know the reason that why are they different from us. People also form certain attitudes and opinions about others who are not like them. Whenever we form opinions about certain people, these are generally negative. We see them as lazy, cunning, stingy, and these above statements become prejudice that we carry about them. The word prejudice means to judge other people negatively or to, just, or to see them as inferior. When we think that one particular way is the best or the right way to do things, we often end up not respecting others who may prefer to do things differently. For example, if we think English is the best language, the other languages are not important. We are judging these other languages negatively. As a result, we might not respect people who speak languages other than English. We can be prejudiced about many other things. For example, people's religious beliefs, the color of their skin, the region they come from, the accent they speak in, the clothes they wear, etc. Often our prejudice about others are so strong that we don't want to form friendships with them. At times, we may even act in different ways and hurt them. Now let us move on to another topic, another form of discrimination, which is stereotype. Whenever we fix people into one image, we create a stereotype. When people say that they belong to a particular country, religion, race, or economic background are stingy, lazy, criminal, or dumb, they are using stereotypes. They are stingy and generous people everywhere in our country, in every religion and in every group, whether they are rich or poor, male or female. And just because some people are not like us, we think that everyone will be the same. Stereotypes stop us from looking at each person as unique individual with his or her own special qualities and skills that are different from others. They fit large numbers of people into one own pattern and type. Stereotypes affect all of us as they prevent us from doing certain things that might affect otherwise be good. Inequality and discrimination. Discrimination happens when people act on their prejudice and stereotype. If you do something to put other people down, if you stop them from taking part in certain activities and taking up jobs, or stop them from living in certain neighborhoods, prevent them from taking water from the same well or hand pump, or not allow them to drink tea in the same cup or glasses as others, you are discriminating them. Discrimination happens in several reasons. Because, for example, religion. This is an aspect of diversity. However, this diversity can also be a source of discrimination. Groups of people may speak certain language, follow particular religion, live in specific regions, etc. may be discriminated against as their customs and practices may not be seen as inferior or they may not be the same as others and so they are considered as inferior. Another, exa another example is of difference based on economic background. 
People who are poor do not have resources or money to meet their basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter. They experience discrimination in offices, hospitals, schools, wherever they are treated badly because they are poor. People being discriminated against. People in our country are engaged in different types of work or activities like teaching, carpentry, pottery, weaving, fishing, farming, etc. to earn a livelihood. However, certain kinds of work are valued more than others. Activities like cleaning, washing, cutting hair, picking garbage are seen as tasks that are of less value and people who do this work are seen as dirty or impure. This belief is an important aspect of the caste system. In the caste system, community groups of people are placed in a sort of ladder where each caste is either above or below the other. Those who placed themselves at the top of this ladder called themselves the upper caste and saw themselves as superior. Those who are placed at the bottom of this ladder are seen as unworthy and are called untouchables. Caste rules were set which do not allow the so-called untouchables to take on work other than what they are meant to do. For example, some groups are only allowed to pick garbage and remove dead animals from the village. Dalit is a term that people belonging to the so-called lower caste used to address themselves. They prefer this word to untouchable. Dalit means those who have been broken. The government refers to this group of people as scheduled castes or SC. Now let us look at one of the most famous leaders of the Dalit community, who is none other than the father of our Indian constitution, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. He is the best known leader of the Dalits. Dr. Ambedkar fought for the rights of the Dalit community. He was born into the Meher caste of Maharashtra, which was considered an untouchable. The Mehers were poor, owned no land and children born to them had to do work their parents did. They lived in spaces outside the main village and were not allowed to enter into the main village. Dr. Ambedkar was the first person from his caste to complete his college education and then went to England to become a lawyer. He encouraged other Dalit children to go to school and college to complete their education. They also urged all the Dalits to take up different kinds of government jobs in order to move out of the caste system. He led many efforts of Dalits to gain entry into temples. And later in life, he converted to Buddhism in search for a religion that treated all members equally. Dr. Ambedkar believed that Dalits must fight the caste system and work towards the society, which is based on respect, not just for a few, but for all persons. Striving for equality. The struggle for freedom from British rule not also included within the struggle of large groups of people who not only fought against the British, but also fought to be treated more equally. Dalits, women, tribals, peasants fought against the inequalities they experienced in their lives. Many Dalits organized themselves to gain entry into the temples. Women demanded they should have as much as right of education as men did. Peasants and tribals fought to release themselves from the grasp of the money lender and the high interest they were charged. When India became a nation in 1947, our leaders too were concerned about the different kinds of inequalities that existed in our country. So these leaders set out a vision and the goals in the constitution to ensure that all the people of India were considered equal. This equality of all persons is seen as a key value that unites us all as Indians. Everyone has equal rights and opportunities. Untouchability today, according to the constitution, is seen as a crime and is legally abolished by law. People are free to do the cho choice of work they wish to. Government jobs are now open to all. In addition, the constitution also placed responsibility on the government to take specific steps to realize this right to equality for poor and other marginal communities. So students, that was about a quick explanation. Let us move further and understand that they also felt that people must have the freedom to follow their religion, speak their language, celebrate the festivals, express themselves freely. They said that no one language or religion or festival should be 
seen as compulsory for all to follow. They said that the government must treat all religions equally. Therefore, India became a secular country where people of different religions and faith have the freedom to practice and follow their religion without any fear of discrimination. This is seen as an important element for our unity that we all live together and respect one another. This was all about the explanation of this chapter. Let us have a look at few questions. You all are requested to please go through the reading of this chapter, listen to the explanation and solve these following questions. Thank you.